What's up guys, Funhouse back with another bet tracking spreadsheet video. Uh, the previous tutorial I put up had a sheet that was way out of date, so I figured it was time to do another just quick upload. So first things first, what you need to know is this is a free sheet and it's a Google sheet. So if you have a Google account, you can click one of the links in the description below, either for American odds or decimal odds, click make a copy, and then you can rename it and it is yours to start tracking your bets and seeing those performance charts growing. So the purpose of this video, I'm going to go through every tab, just very general, how to use the sheet. I'll put timestamps in the description and you can go through and uh, click around as you see fit. And then I'm going to record another video that will have uh, every FAQ kind of answered and we'll go through some of the more specific things. So if you're looking for something kind of more fine tuned about spreadsheets or how to do something, then just maybe try that FAQ video. And if you're new to spreadsheets, don't be intimidated. We have tons and tons of support pieces and fail safes built into this. I'm going to show you them all along the way. And the first one actually is over here on this About tab. So as you can see all the tabs down below here, the About section has full descriptions on how to use every one of them. And if we scroll way to the bottom, You'll see we also have just general spreadsheet tips and filter stuff. And at the very, very bottom, there's a version history. So if we're doing some troubleshooting, I'll know which version you guys have. And then if you're seeing these prices and you're wondering, you just told me it was free, what's the deal? It is free, and these are just one-on-one -on -one services I offer. If you want to have a kind of personal one-on-one -on -one tutorial, just me and you, or you want to build out a custom sheet, uh, that's just some of the services. And of course, if you find that your sports betting is improving and profits are going up and you want to tip yours truly, I would welcome it, of course. And those are the options right there. Uh, it doesn't happen often, and when it does, I am super pumped and appreciate it. So yeah, put a million hours in the sheet, so it's always, always appreciated. So let's get into actually how to kind of use the sheet and log our bets. We'll skip over the FAQ because, like I said, I'm going to do a whole video for that. It's going to go through all of those. And then we're going to start over here at our bet section. And the best way to do that is just to run through an example. So say you make a bet and it's time to track it in this, uh, in this sheet here. So you notice that all of these drop-down boxes right now are empty. And that's because we need to populate them with information in settings. There's no point in me putting a bunch of samples in here and then you guys use something different. So uh these items these five are here by default and they're actually going to be prevalent in the performance metrics later it's going to give you a wager and profit information on all of these uh, like i said they're default we can change them to anything we want and we want to pick something that you know we want feedback on so in fact the fifth one extra is there to encourage just that to change it to something specific to you but just for the sake of this exercise we'll leave these ones the same and I'll show you what happens I'll just throw in a couple samples and let's say that I want my extra category to be bet subtype and I can kind of subdivide my bets into a second group and the first uh, fail safe in place is Protected ranges. They prevent you from editing something we're not supposed to. So all of these are protected. If I try to edit, it's going to give me an error. If I hit OK, it will overwrite it, but it, I can also hit cancel and just back away. View, show, protected ranges, and you can see that'll show every single area in the sheet that it's protected. It's going to be generally all formulas uh, or things that are connected. Anything that's a solid color as well is not going to be something we generally edit. And yeah, so we have a few samples here. Let's jump back over to bets. We make a bet. First one is the date. Double click opens a calendar. You can pick either the day of the event or the day you make the bet. It's up to you. Just want to be consistent with what you go with. And then now you can see these drop down boxes have options in them. So we'll pick those and we changed our extra category to bet subtype so i'm just going to change this header and we'll go through like a sample over bet so here's the first piece of general information entered next is the pick area 
and right now it's pick an opponent. You could have it as home and away. I like it as pick as an opponent. So money line picks, I can filter them and see how teams are doing. But again, it's up to you. Uh, so let's just add in. Next column is modifier. So it's kind of just an extra column for some wiggle room. You could put, uh, you know, maybe some information that's going to differentiate a couple bets. Maybe you didn't use the bet subtype like I did. So you put information in there for that. Maybe it's a cash out. You could also turn this into like a uh, notes tab if you want or column. So a few options there. And then we have the total and spread. And it's actually that's where this protected area, it's feeding these two columns. So if you use them, it's going to later on, you can get some kind of stats from them. Whereas sometimes people will enter a whole bunch of information in here, you know, put the over under info in there and you won't get anything. So if we picked, let's say this over, then that will give us some stats later. And then we'll go type of bet with total. And then that takes us to the wager and odds and outcome section. So outcome all protected because there's tons. These are all formulas as you can see. And then wager and odds. There's only three things we have to log and that's wager, odds, and then the result. So if it wins, profit, if it pushes, defaults to zero, and if it loses, it's negative. So those are the things we have to do. And then there are a few optional ones. So if you want to log how much your units equal, then it will also calculate that too. So the whole sheet uses a uh, dollar as kind of a performance metric, but we also have the ability to use units if we want. And yeah, so that's, that's what we would enter there. And then closing odds, if you want to do closing line, you can enter that. There's information in the FAQ on how that's calculated. And then lastly, over here, actually not lastly, payout boost, we'll add a payout boost. And then if it's a free bet, you just check this box off. A win obviously just acts normally, but a loss, instead of being negative, it will default to zero. Okay, so that is a sample bet, very, standard example. We'll go through a ton of the more gray areas in the FAQ video. Um, and yeah, the last thing I'll show you, if you don't, if your units don't change often, you can actually enter these and copy paste it all the way to the bottom if you want. And then you can hide the column and just forget about it. Uh, forget about it. And then it'll calculate the entire you know, all your bets according to the units. And then if you, the units do change, you can just open it back up and change it at that point. And it's done that way instead of having like one box as your units because we want, I don't want past uh, values affected by just one box. So that is a very general example. And I'm actually gonna copy it and make two of them just to Make it a little bit different. Say so that one's a win. And the reason is, is I just want to show you guys the next tab, which is tracking. So you can see this is a lock on the bottom. We don't have to edit anything in this sheet. It's completely locked. And as a result of all our hard work in logging the bets, then we get great information back. So the first one is tracking. It does daily, weekly, monthly, and yearly. And the way it works is, I'll scroll down. It only calculates up until today's date. So you can see we got two bets. I'm recording this on this date. And it calculates automatically the wager, the net in both dollar and units, gives us the return. And if you log closing line value, it'll it'll calculate the average for that too. And then weekly, monthly, and yearly, the way they work is as soon as the period is complete, it'll give us the information. So after September is over, all that will populate. After the year is over, all that populates. And that is just done for psychological reasons. And then the next one we're going to go to is performance. And this is another uh, tab that we don't have to edit. It's just going to feed us all the information and give us feedback from, again, our data entry. 
So I'm going to jump over to a sample sheet I made with dummy data in it just because we don't have much to show on performance with two bets. There we go. Um, so you'll see we got a lot more items and settings and uh, a little more data. So, Oh, and also you'll notice everywhere in row four, just another bit of a fail safe, is it'll always explain what the columns do below. Um, and if you didn't have protected ranges on, like we don't in this sheet, you could look at the uh, bolded kind of text. It'll denote formulas that are below it. So just another fail safe built in. Um, so yeah, performance is going to take those five metrics that we saw from settings, and basically it's going to do everything for us. This is another tab we don't have to do anything with. It calculates everything. And at the bottom of every chart, there is a filter that has every one of our items from settings in it that so we can cross-reference. And just like how we hid a column earlier, we can also hide rows if we don't need to have this many. It's going to give us that disclaimer, but that's no big deal. Just hit OK. And now it's a little bit more of a manageable chart. And I'll show you just how the filter works. So these are bet types. I could cross-reference it with maybe a sports book, and it'll show me how the bet types are doing for that book. And yeah, you get the idea. And then to reset it, you just go back to all. You see the pie charts also change with it, which is pretty cool. And then down below, we have overall performance, which gives us all the information for our entire, I guess, career, I guess, on the, uh, on the sheet over the years. Then we have all the bankroll graphs, one that goes over each year, individual years, and this um, set your own amount of days kind of graph. And then on the right, we have the weekly, monthly, and yearly overlay chart. All of these are in dollar, but if we kept going down, we would also have them all duplicated in unit as well. And next to overall performance, we have highlights and lowlights, just taking your, your best and your worst of all those different categories. And you can see the over-unders and the spreads here. And like I mentioned in bets, if you log those, we'll get some stats back right there. And then lastly, there's an odds kind of breakdown performance. And the top one here is uh, one that you can just set the odds for manually. It'll give you the amount. So I think that is it for performance. Um, we'll jump back to the original sheet and go to value breakdown. So this is just a place where we can do handicapping. There's two-way and three-way markets. I'll just run through a quick example. You would put in that matchup like we had earlier. And you can set the bet type. Uh, optional here. In fact, let's give it another bet type here. Money line. And then you would set your probability for it for the match. And then you would just set what the actual odds are. Let's just say something like that. And it'll calculate all of the uh, this information for us. Give us kind of an expected value based on that and then there's like a recommended bet type or bet amount according to bankroll which we'll get into in a second uh, that number is coming from the tools and bankroll tab and there's a kelly criterion thing here that you can set the risk uh, risk tolerance for and then lastly if you select one of the picks over here and it is one that has a positive value it'll highlight across so if you have a lot of matches on the go They'll kind of stand out uh, which ones have positive value. And on the far right, there's a book comparison tool. So you would just set, you know, put the odds in at numerous books. And it will give you the best price. Like that. See? And you can just put your books in here, sports books. And, yeah. And value breakdown three-way street. Kind of works the same way, except we have a third option. And we just put it as draw. But... You can put it however you like, whichever one, and works the exact same way. So I think what we'll do now, we're going to skip over research and finances for a second, go right to tools and bankroll because we were just uh, talking about bankroll. So let's jump in here. And there's two, two ways you can kind of log bankroll. The first is if you decided to log your deposits and withdrawals, the sheet will take care of the rest. So let's just do a quick example here. 
I should mention too, we talked in the beginning with settings that we could change these to whatever we want. They're kind of the, def the defaults, but there is a couple areas where they are tied loosely. So Sportsbook, as you can see, shows up here in, def in the uh, Tools and Bankroll and Deposits section. Um, and it's just pulling all the sports books we put. And if we did deposits and withdrawals, it's going to kind of keep how much that tally is, as well as the profits from, you know, our bets section, calculating those. And if one of these, let's say, was not complete, it was pending, it'll keep track of that as well. And then it just tallies it up and gives you a total. And if you had multiple books, it's going to just tally them all up give you the exact total and then you have the 1% incremental increase chart all the way to 100 showing you what that bankroll would look like. Um, so that's if you were kind of strictly logging the bankroll or tracking it. If you wanted to not log deposits and withdrawals and still kind of use this, you could you know choose which formulas you want to have operational here and then maybe you just enter some information generally to get a quick snapshot of what you know is in each book and then It'll still tally everything up for you. So that's tools and bankroll. Uh, I guess the tools part of it is just common converters and calculators. Nothing, nothing out of the ordinary. Get the idea. Um, at the bottom there is a kind of a handy multi-way selection tool to find out the juice because that can be kind of annoying to do on your own. And yeah, so that's tools and bankrolls, deposits and withdrawals, um, goals, notes, uh, and research are all very self-explanatory. The only thing of note I'll mention is if you have goals set up yearly and monthly and you check the box, it'll strike through. And yeah, I think that's that's good for that. I think I will show you a little bit about finances because it's a little bit more kind of a little bit more to this one. And I'm actually going to jump back over to that dummy sheet here, just because I kind of pre-set up a couple things. So it's basically just a general finance tracker with a sports betting twist to it. Uh, it'll calculate your income uh, with whatever you put in, as well as all your expenses. And then it's a monthly kind of tracker. So the uh, balance left over will be displayed, as well as the percentage of your income spent. And then on this side here, the chart shows 5% incremental changes of that balance, what that looks like. And then if you were to set a budget, a percentage of that balance, say you want to do a lot to betting, let's just say for easy math, um, you'll see that the amount allotted to betting has now changed. And if we take it one step further, if you want to log deposits and withdrawals, we will get that information showing as well. You can see now we have the amount deposited. If you withdraw, it'll go the other way. Uh, so it keeps a tally of that and the amount a lot to betting still there. And as that goes, if, say if it was 100, it turned to 200. Goes from green to yellow. And then of course, our degenerative red. So that's not you guys though, don't worry. Those people have already turned off the video long ago and emailed me on how do I log parlays and extreme examples as to borrow money. And I wish I was joking about that one. So that's it really for finances. The only other thing I'll mention is for the savings part, the investment side of savings doesn't tally into the income. It's supposed to be for something like money if you were to put away. And then the debt is actually just like a tally of what your debt is. It doesn't factor into the expenses. You would put the, uh, the debt payments in the expenses. So that's it, guys. I think that's kind of every every tab I've gone through it and showing you guys everything in the sheet. Like I said, we are going to do another video where we go through every single FAQ and uh, really get into the nitty gritty of it. So that's it guys for this video. Hope you guys enjoy the sheet and hope you guys have a profitable year. Okay. Cheers.